Horth seems to be a really divisive game. I've seen a lot of people try it out, usually the Game Boy version, because that's the one that was released in the US, go, what is this garbage, and then walk away. And then there's the sizable crowd who really gets into it, who love everything about this attempt to merge shoot 'em ups and block puzzles. I fall into the latter category. Quarth was originally an arcade game, and for the arcade release, it was known as Block Hole outside of Japan. It seems to be part of a whole movement of lower-cost arcade games that were going around at the very end of the 80s. It was also the first game developed by Hiroshi Iuchi. He'd go on to make Radiant Silver Gun and Ikoruga, so the man clearly liked his shoot 'em ups with unusual mechanics. And as a sign that things are changing, this was not the first port of Porth to a console. The Game Boy port was released a month before the Famicom version. Just another way that the Famicom was becoming the second tier platform in 1990. Most people's first reaction to Quarth is, oh, it's Tetris except you shoot the blocks. And that's not really how the game works. It's more of a shoot 'em up where you build things. There are block pieces that are descending from the top of the screen, and you have to eliminate them before they reach the line that's just in front of your ship. To do that, you have to form rectangles. Your ship fires one square at a time, and you can fire up to four at once. Both the A and B buttons fire a brick. When it comes to eliminating a brick, it only takes four shots to form them into a rectangle. But if you want to do well at Quarth, you can't just take them out one at a time. Any rectangle that forms gets erased, including ones made up of multiple bricks, and even if they have holes in them. So you want to keep an eye out for opportunities where you can erase a giant slab. But this is something that's easier said than done. A lot of the time there will be overhangs or other problems that prevent you from squaring something off nicely. And sometimes you might want to form a big rectangle, but you have to form a small rectangle to get there, and that would erase some of your necessary structure. So you always have to be thinking fast here. How much can you eliminate from that group of blocks that are coming up? This isn't so bad when you're starting out at level 0, but by the time you hit level 4, you're going to have to be responding pretty quick as the blocks come down. Something that adds to the challenge is that your ship is not especially fast. You're not able to zip from side to side in this arena. Sticking to one region and clearing it out is better than running to opposite sides and going back and forth. One thing that does work to your advantage is that the screen freezes while blocks are being erased. And that means that the more bricks that are eliminated at once, the longer the pause is before it starts moving again. Also, every 25 blocks that you clear, you get a special power-up block. The red ones give you bonus points, the white ones do something to the playfield. To get the power-up, you have to erase that block. When the power-up blocks appear, your cursor changes to a letter to tell you what the effect will be. B is just extra points, while C is a score doubler. And for the white blocks, E erases all blocks on the field, and S stops them for an extended period. Your cursor will start blinking as the time runs out on those effects. At the start of the game, you can pick what stage you'd like to begin at, anything from 0 to 9. And the stages are always consistent with the block layout. Again, Quarth isn't Tetris. These aren't randomized. Along the right-hand side, you'll see an indicator telling you how far you've progressed through each stage. It basically goes from 0 to 9, and when you reach 0, you've completed the level. Then you get some bonus points based on how you eliminated the bricks, and then move on. There's two different ship designs in the game, if you happen to not like the Baroque design of the bell. You pick which one you want at the start, but they behave exactly the same. If you find that the game is moving a bit slow for you at the lower levels, you can hit up to increase the scrolling. Later on, I doubt you'd want to do this. One of the things that makes Quarth challenging is that an accidental shot will screw you up pretty bad. If you shoot one extra brick, then you have a whole line that you have to fill in to complete your rectangle. Initially, you can recover from that, but it's not long before an extra brick would be fatal. The two things I recommend for playing are to count your shots and use both the A and B buttons. You can fire off a burst of two squares at once if you move off A and B in rapid succession. That's how you play Quarth, and it's pretty solid, but Konami added a lot more to this one. There are three different two-player modes in Quarth. You can play side-by-side -side cooperatively, 
competitively with both players having their own shaft. In this mode, if you clear away three or more blocks at once, then it advances the other player's side. Or you could be boring and alternate when players die. In Japan, Worth seems to have a much better reputation than it does elsewhere in the world. The arcade game was kind of popular, and the Famicom port was well regarded. And as I said, I really like this one. There's a good risk-reward balance, and a pretty high skill ceiling. I doubt I'll ever manage to beat level 5 myself, but I still enjoy breaking out Worth and playing it. There's more to this game than you might see at first glance.